This is CS124, Lesson 1.3, Expressions. Up to this point, you should already know how to choose and use different data types, how to declare a variable, and how to display information to the screen. Today, we're going to discuss how to show simple equations in C++, as well as the difference between integer division and floating point division. A CPU can only perform basic operations and must do these one at a time. It follows a certain order to get these steps done. First, variables are replaced with their assigned values. Second, the processor determines order of operations. And third, all integers being computed with floats are converted to floats. Let's break this down step by step so that we can understand what's going on. As you know, a variable refers to a memory location. That memory location has a value, hopefully one that you put there. This is why we've initialized, we initialize values to zero, to ensure that we aren't using some meaningless leftover data in memory. Here we have the variable age human years. It's being stored in memory, so when we start to use it in an equation, the processor must go and locate that spot in memory and extract the value from it, in this case, 4. So we get 4 times 7, our result being 28. Then we're done with step 1. The order of operations in C++ is the same as the order of operations in algebra. For more detail, you can refer to your text. We're going to review some operations you might not be so familiar with. Take special note of the equal versus double equal symbols. The single equal is an assignment operator, which we'll talk more about later. And the double equal is the equal to operator, which compares the left side to the right side to see if they're equal. Also note that the multiplication is shown with an asterisk. Let's start with the increment operator. The increment operator is plus plus, and it increases the given variable by one. And the decrement operator decrements the given variable by one. In this code, age is incremented, then displayed. It is equally efficient to do both steps at once. Now consider putting the increment operator before the variable, like so. The difference here is that the increment is performed before the variable is retrieved instead of after. As mentioned, we need to discuss integer versus floating point division. Floating point division is the same as mathematical division. However, integer division gets tricky because any remainders are thrown away. Even though integer division truncates any remainders, we can use the modulo operator to find these remainders if we need to use them. We noted earlier that a single equal sign in programming indicates that whatever is on the left gets assigned to whatever is on the right. There is, however, a shorthand way to do this, especially since adding variables is so common. We can use the plus equals operator, which adds what's on the right to what's on the left, and then reassigns that value to the left. It's an easier way of doing the same thing. This process can be used with any basic operator. Plus, subtract, multiply, divide, and modulo. At last, we've reached the third and final step of calculating, converting ints to floats. Remember, this is done only if a float and an int are being calculated together. Integers will always convert to floats in this case. To understand this process better, we're going to take a moment to talk about casting. Casting is where you take something that is of one type and change it to another type temporarily. We're going to start with an integer. and then we're going to cast it to a float. This is done by simply putting the type you want to switch it to, in this case a float, right before the variable name, which should be called value. And to prove to you that it didn't change permanently, Well, I'll put it again, it's an integer. Casting can be very useful when you're working with different data types and you need to do multiplication or division or any kind of equation with those different data types. And that concludes today's lesson.